back? Would you take? Would you give my back? Would you take my car when I start to crack? Would you rescue me? Uh, would you rescue me? Would you rescue me? Would you rescue me when I'm by myself? When I need your love? If I need your love? G'day everybody, I'm Kai from Elixir Mods, and in today's tutorial, we're going to be running over doing the unity side so in our last video we finished off with our item here if you've been following along um, then you've probably already got all this stuff done if not then the video for the previous one um, should be displaying on screen around about now if you want to have a look um, but if you're just looking for the unity stuff then we're going to be covering that today the last video was about 30 minutes and I'm gonna try and keep this one under 30 minutes today um, I know the longer they are the less likely people are going to want to watch them um, and they're looking for specific information on certain things but anyway so today we're going to get stuck into the uni stuff um, and we're going to be using all the code that we've been using pri prior on so if you've already got your own stuff going on and you just want the unity stuff a lot of 90 percent of this um, is still going to be relevant to you because like all the stuff that we're going to be using you have to use as well um, all your namings and everything like we just make sure everything matches and stuff all right so we're going to open up our unity scene so this was the unity scene that we did in the very first video when we put it all together um, as you can see down the bottom here i've got a new folder called models that i've gone and added in a model and some and a basic material for it um, now these will be down in the description below a download for this table and this basic material for you to put in your own unity scene um, and follow along if you want uh, or you can do this with your own objects if that's what you're trying to do. Um, so we're going to get stuck into that today. So just during that cut, I just wanted to add something else. Uh, I want, I'm going to include this little uh, UI sprite. Um, it's literally just uh, just a little generic one. It, it's probably it doesn't even suit the table, but this is going to help test to make sure that your icons are working. So we're going to make sure that this is a sprite. Uh, we're going to go to Sprite Editor. Ah, okay, so no Sprite Editor window registered. Please download the 2D Sprite package from Package Manager. So that's something we can go ahead and add, but if you uh, have a big sprite sheet, that'll be something really, really handy to have. So we're going to go into Window um, and Package Manager, and then you're going to look for the sprite manager. I've already got most of this stuff installed on my default solution, so I kind of forgot about that. But you don't have to use a sprite, you can just use a basic 64 by 64 pixel image. Um, that'll help it display properly in game. Um, and I've just been going over a little bit of testing and stuff as well, so hopefully um, I, I've got it right this time. <laughs> a lot of people were missing a lot of scripts from the last icon fix video. So this should help with the icons in this one as well. All right, so a few things that we need is we need our name. So we, in our last video, we called it my item object and then my item item. I know that is rather confusing, but <laughs> that's what we've got. So we've, we made our, um, our game object in the first video. But we're just gonna rename this and we're gonna call this my item item. And this is going to attach to our item in our code. So as you can see here, um, it's going to attach to this item right here. Um, it matches the names, and you can also use this to override stuff that's already in game as well. So if you want to do texture packs and things, you can do the same thing. So um, if you want to like change the doors, how the doors look or something, this will be the way to do it. As for block sets, that's a little bit different, that's more advanced, and I'm not going to cover that in this video today, we're just going to cover adding a basic item and uh, a basic model. The more advanced stuff will come at a later date, uh, as I have a bit more free time, because it does take a lot longer. But let's just cover our item today. So our old system used to be... Um, So we want to change from a normal transform to a rect transform. And our position would usually be 32 minus 32. 
So the width and the height of this will need to be 64 by 64. And we can also try and add a layout element. So we're going to go preferred width, preferred height for 64. And we're just going to leave that. I don't know if they've added this in. No, they haven't. So we don't need to worry about the item template script. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new empty to it. And we're going to call this icon. We're going to add another empty. We'll call it tool. Tools are only necessary if you're making tools. And we'll try and add one more to this. We'll call it icon name. Now the icon name is supposed to have a script attached to it. Um, its alignment will be left middle. Position usually is 70 x y 0 and we're going to try and add a text mesh pro text UI field to it. Um, so this is where it'll ask you for the te uh, TMP importer. So this is just importing all the essentials. Uh, we don't need to worry about the examples and the extras. But that just adds in um, our icon name. So when it comes up in the chat and stuff, it'll attach the icon with the icon name and it looks pretty. And Anyways, we'll, uh, that's pretty much all we're going to worry about for this one. Uh, as the tool, the tool uh, doesn't use track rec transform, it just uses normal transform. But we don't need to worry about that. So we just remove that and we'll just leave that as transform. As for our icon, this will use stretch. Left, zero, top, zero. Right, zero, bottom, zero. So zero it out. And that's usually that's our icon there. Whoop. I accidentally unmuted myself. That's not something I wanted to do. So just make sure we got all our stuff organized properly. So this font size will be thirty two. And now we're going to start adding to our icon. So we're going to create a new empty. We're going to call this foreground. Oh, actually, we don't even need the big G. Foreground. We're going to add a new one. We'll call this background. And then add one more. And we're going to call this full image. So full image, foreground, and background. So background can literally just be um, a color. So we're going to add the image script, and we'll just give it a, a just, just general blue background color. That's all we need to do. We don't even need to attach a sprite. Foreground, we're going to add an image as well, um, and also we're going to set these all to stretch just so it fills. Now, in our foreground, uh, in our foreground is where we attach our sprite. And then we're going to do the same thing in our full image, stretch, we attach our icon there as well. And then we're going to hide our full image because we don't need that displayed. Yeah, that's right. This should be about 35.75. I'm probably backwards. Yep.
I'm not literally adding out icon. Usually these are added inside of a um, container, but we don't need to. We don't need to worry about that because we could probably add vertical layout group. Control child size, width, and height. Untick them. icon name that we don't we don't need to worry about that we can actually go ahead and remove that script we don't need that go ahead and remove that component so that should be zero zero Full zero. Right. Foreground, zero, 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 zero. Everything needs to be zeroed out. And I've gone to mess with my icon names positioning. So that would be 70. Width. Basically, you just go 244 and 35. And then that's our icon, foreground, background, full image. Icon should be set to stretch. Left, middle. And then that's that done. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new empty. And this is going to be our object. So this will be my item object. So now we're going to grab our table. We're going to attach our table to our object. And unpack our prefab. This allows us to edit and change things. Now... Sometimes when you add a new empty, the position is way off, so we need to set this back to zero. This needs to be all zero. So once we've gone and zeroed out, there's our table. Now, in my Unity scene, for some reason, it's always really dark and I can't see anything properly. So when I'm working here, I might add a, a point light. Set that to zero, zero, zero. And just make it so I can go up, please. Oh my gosh. <laughs> up, thank you. Just so I can see what I'm doing when I'm playing around with textures and stuff. Alright, so next thing we're going to do now, so we have our object, we're going to add the world object scripts. Um, now this is a table, we don't need it to be interactable, uh, so we're just going to turn the interactable off. So this way people won't be able to walk up to the table and press E on it, because there's no need for them to press E, because it's literally just a table. It's Excuse me. All right, so now we need to add a mesh collider because it should already have the mesh renderer. We need a mesh collider and we're going to add the convex box because we don't want people to be able to pass through it at any point. Um, so this will mean that the collider will cover the entire area. Um, we're also going to add it, a mesh collider to our tabletop convex that as well um, and this will just stop you from being able to walk through your model when it's placed in the world um, and allows you to use your hammer to pick it up so that's our table put in and now we can go ahead and we can apply our material straight to the table and we put that on the 
tabletop and we'll put that on the legs. Um, the UVs are not perfect. As I said, it is literally just a uh, quick model. Um, but this should look semi-okay on it. We're not, we're not going for perfect, but you can spend time getting UVs and stuff set up right. This is just a basic thing. So now we have our world object, a table, and our item in our Unity scene. And that's pretty much all there is to adding it into Unity. So we go ahead and we save our scene, we grab our two items and we'll just hide them, save our scene, always save your scene after any major changes, because when you go to build it, they might not apply if you haven't saved your scene. Now to build your entire Unity scene and export it out to be uh, used in Eco, going to go to mod kit. Now if everything's working perfectly fine on your Unity install, um, mod kit will be available. Otherwise if you're full of errors, the mod kit option won't be available. So just make sure that like you've covered all the bases and that you can build your current bundle. So we're going to go build our current bundle. We're just going to go to mods and we're just going to call this testing.unity3d and we're going to hit save. Now this can take a little bit of time, depending on how big your your scene is, your model is, all that jazz. This can take a long time to do, or it can take a very, very short amount of time to do. Um, and now that that's done, we are going to go ahead and we're going to start putting things into our server for testing. So we've got our mod here. I'm going to open up the folder that it's located in. I'm just going to grab the CS file for the time being. So we're going to grab the CS file and we're going to put it just into our mods folder there. So now we have my first item and our testing Unity um, 3D file. And then we can go ahead and we can boot up the server. The server shouldn't take too long to boot because it's already been, it's already a generated world. This is pretty much just my my testing. Now if we get any errors it'll be really good because then we'll be able to um, see see what the problems are. So I'm going to let this full boot. Uh, this could take a minute or two on the video time. If you want to skip ahead feel free to skip ahead. Um, but just for the time being you can we can just sit here and watch this take 20 years. Now I don't know what this mods recompiled with warnings thing is, um, it doesn't spit out any errors or anything like that, but a lot of confusion a lot of people have when the eco server is loading up mods, this is mostly for people who own servers, um, not specifically modders, but I'll just explain something to you uh, real quick once this has finally finished its little boot up process, there we go. As you can see here, um, loading mods and then mods recompiled with warnings that's the cs files so that's all of the stuff in your in your mods folder so like uh, auto gen plant that's all of this stuff here um, and then you've got the stuff here say like loading em framework uh, and tso vote mod and stuff like that these are the dlls that are made so if we actually put um, our mod that we created in as a dll it would come up saying loading um, my mod. So this is just the, this is the last process of loading up the mods. So it loads up everything and then it goes through the mod kit plugin, which then starts checking things against each other, trying to look for any errors or anything that's the same or similar, um, which then it hits initializing items and skills. If it hits this point and it just throws an error or doesn't let you do anything, um, that means there is either an error which it should log for you, it should tell you what the error is and then you just um, debug that error or get a little bit of help if you need help. But now that you can, um, our server is successfully booted and is running, let's load up Eco and check it out. So at this point, we just need to make sure that we um, we reference this name here. So see how we've got the lock display name, my item. 
that's the name that we're going to use to give ourselves our item to test to make sure it works. Um, and it helps to keep all your naming the same throughout the entire file. So like my item on your object, my item in your item part, and my item in your recipe, unless you've got specific recipes. So you could have like my item wood, my item metal, or, or whatever. So this is our testing server that we just booted up. Uh, the downloading mods will only download mod files smaller than 30 megabytes at this point in time. I'm not sure if they're working on a fix. So try and keep your Unity files under 30 megabytes. So if we go and look at our mods file, our testing file here, it's only 758 kilobytes. It's very tiny. That's because we have a single model and a single icon in there. So we try and load into our world. It's loaded up all the mods. We've downloaded everything we need to download. And we have a timeout error for a web request. System.net request. So that could be our mod related or it could be server related. So yeah, sometimes you just gotta reconnect, it's just a little bit of an issue. All right, so here we are, we're in Eco. I'm just gonna level this out so we can see everything. And we have a nice flat green area. All right, so we're going to give ourselves my item. There we go, as you can see in chat, there it is, my item. Can be crafted at the workbench. This is what the UI link is, by the way. So the UI link features that we added in the last video allows it, so when it's in chat, we can hover over it and it gives us little bits of details. Um, and here it is, there's our item in our toolbox or our bench. And here it is, our, our little table, it's not very big, um, it's very tiny. So when we place this down, there it is, there's our little table. And as you can see, there's no ghosting icon, so everything that we've done in the icons is perfectly fine. And then we can use our hammer to pick it back up. And there we go, we've picked our item back up. Now there's a few other things you can add to your tables and stuff, like um, housing values and things like that, but we're not going to really worry about that, we don't need to. At this point in time, we've just made our first little object and put it down in the world, and, and there we have it. Just a small little coffee table. And that's it for today's. Um, so that's literally if you've done everything in this tutorial, you should be able to put your object down inside of the game. Um, one thing I did do off screen that I didn't mention at the very start of the video was I updated my Unity to um, 4.13, so 2019.4.13, um, which should help if your model comes as just a little one by one square block, which I can I could show you. Now there'd be a few reasons why um, your object might show up as a little block. We'll cover them really quickly once we get back in. So we'll go over here real quick. And as you can see here, we've got a few, of, like quite a few of them. Um, now one of the reasons, the reason why these ones aren't actually showing up and they've got no icon is because I don't actually have the Unity files downloaded for these because it's like 60 odd megs. Um, but if your block turns out like this, um, your naming could be incorrect. So you might have misspelled or you have a typo somewhere, um, or you're using an outdated Unity version. Or if your mod files are too big, as I said earlier, 30 megabytes, um, then they won't download. So the Unity files won't be on your computer. Now, one thing I did forget to cover, which we can see right now, as you can see, the further we get away from the table, it starts floating and this is a really 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 easy fix um, and I did it on like this on purpose so in case some people um, you know they follow tutorials or they know what they're doing normally and they can't figure out why their object might be floating the further they get away the further you get away the more it floats off the ground Go away wolf and that's literally because we didn't actually set our material shader so if we this is where our 
can go away, don't need that. This is where our material is. This is the one that we put onto our table. And the shader is just set to standard and it needs to be set to curved standard. So once it's set to curved standard, save your Unity scene, rebuild your mod kit, overwrite your original one, wait for it to build. Now if you're running your server locally, all you have to do is disconnect from the world, wait for it to finish building, which it's finished building, Open up your server GUI, click mod kit and refresh mod unity data. Do it once, twice, maybe three times just to make sure that it's fully cleared its data and it's got the new stuff. And while this takes 20 years to exit out of the server. Apologize for the wait times. It's not my computer, I swear. <laughs> I don't have a hundred things running in the background. If this sometimes takes too long, you can just wait till it's just like not responding, click close, and then just reboot. So now that we quickly go back into our server, after we've um, refreshed our mod kit, you need the data, 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 however you want to spell it, say it, whatever. Um, this should download the updated version for us. This just says, hey, look, this has changed. Something's different. You need to download this. We log in. Get rid of that. And now when we get away from our table, it should stay firmly on the ground. As you can see, it's no longer floating. It's literally just because the world's curved, the shader wasn't set to be curved, so it floats. And that's that. That's that one little problem fixed. I hope today's video has been helpful. Um, I have hoped I've answered as many questions as you might have. If you have any more questions, please do leave them in the comments below. I will read them. I will respond. Um, and I'm going to try and get out even more updated tutorials uh on like in the future hopefully maybe next week maybe some more this week depending on how i'm feeling um i'm gonna do one more video today after this one it's how to reference other mods in your own mod so you can use items from other mod packs so very similar to the elixir dies pack um that you can include in your mods so you can use our dies to create uh, fancy new things or make it an extra requirement for crafting colored items anything you might want to do with it uh, excuse me so we're gonna leave that video here today this is another long one um, and then we're gonna go and do the next one and I will see you in the next video